Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef. What's going on today? Smoking is cool again? AI aliens? Aliens? AI aliens? Trad wife is a sad wife. Oh no, too bad. Well, let's get racist. Sigma Tiger News with the Sigma Tiger, the Big Sig Tig. Thank you for joining the Sigma Tiger community. Like, subscribe. Let's get this mask off. 10K subscribers and we'll prove the wife wrong about how popular the news can be with a tiger. And uh, let's dive right in. What do we have to start? New Zealand's new PM to scrap generational smoking ban. So uh, is smoking cool again? Mm, uh, unlikely. At least it's cool uh, for the government to tax continuously. New Zealand's new Prime Minister Christopher Luxon on Monday announced that the government would scrap new anti-smoking laws before they came into effect. The so-called General Smoking Ban, prohibiting future sales of cigarettes to anyone born after 2008, was unveiled by former Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. I think it's Ardern. It looks like a uh, Ardern. Maybe it's not. Maybe that is her name. Anyway. Uh, Luxon confirmed the decision ahead of his swearing-in ceremony, citing fears that the ban would fuel a flourishing black market. Hmm, well, we can't have other people making money where the government could be. The New Zealand passed legislation for the pioneering ban, which would have introduced a steadily rising minimum age for smoking in 2022. Labor government said the measure would save lives and billions of dollars spent on smoking-related illnesses by the country's healthcare system. Well, there is a demand for it. Whenever there's a demand for something, someone will provide, whether illicit or legal. The law would also have limited tobacco sales to uh, designated stores with the number of approved outlets slashed from 6,000 to just 600 nationwide. So if you wanted to go get your cigarettes, uh, you can only get them in certain places. Uh, kind of like Canada and their marijuana laws. You, you must have a, a dispensary uh, that is registered. You're supposed to now. Whether they're in a, enforcing those laws is a completely different story. So what's going to happen, uh, they agreed to repeal the large tract of the law as part of its coalition agreement. So to uh, stay in power, they had to uh, shake hands with the opposition to create a coalition. And they were basically like, hey, listen, we love our ciggies and we need tax money. So let's just uh, pump the brakes on this. Luxon is taking over Prime Minister six weeks after his Conservative National Party won national elections. His inauguration ends. A six-year Labour Party rule ushered in by Ardern, or Arden, I thought it was. Perhaps they just pronounced that with their accent. Who announced a surprising resignation after five years, saying she did not have enough in the tank. She was succeeded by party leader and outgoing Prime Minister Christopher Hipkins. There you go. Uh, Cuba, 500% fuel price rise to take effect Friday, says the government. Can you imagine? Well... That's what real inflation is. Not like, you know, prices have risen 10%. Yeah, that's that's rough and tough, especially if you're carrying debt. Well, can you imagine if it was going to raise 5x? So just say it's like $3 a gallon. Well, guess what? Now it's 15. Look out. So there's a fuel price hike that'll take effect this week. A month later than initially planned, the government of the cash-strapped island nation said, said Wednesday. Finance Minister Vladimir Reguero announced via government mouthpiece grandma that the higher prices will enter into force on friday march 1st the price of electricity will rise by 25 percent from the same date for the country's biggest consumers he added so there you go uh, if you're consuming a ton of electricity your prices are going to go up by a quarter 25 uh, percent Havana had announced a five-fold increase in the fuel price from february 1st as part of a series of measures seeking to cut the communist run nation's budget deficit but it delayed the hike after cybersecurity incident last month a few days later economy minister alejandro uh, gill was relieved of his duties the cost of a liter of regular gasoline gasoline sorry is to rise from 25 pesos 20 cents to 132 pesos right there you go uh while the price of premium gasoline will jump from 30 to 156 pesos the government said last month the price for the public transport Sector will remain the same. However, an increase in natural gas prices has been delayed. The 11 million people 
uh, in the nation are experiencing its worst economic crisis since the collapse of the Soviet bloc in the 1990s due to consequences of the coronavirus pandemic, the tightening of U.S. sanctions in recent years, and structural weakness in the economy. Yeah, absolutely. And they have zero exports. Uh, they play with bodies like a doll. How rampaging elephants are terrorizing Thailand with a surge in fatal attacks as locals arm themselves with ping pong bombs to scare off growing number of animals. Well, let's have a look what's happening here. Rampaging elephants are terrorizing people in Thailand. Fatal attacks are surging. And uh, yeah, they're arming themselves with ping pong balls. So what are they? The number of elephants in Thailand are on the rise following repopulation efforts. But as their natural habitat is simultaneously shrinking, they are forced to live closer to villagers, which caused more than 90 fatal encounters in the east of the country since 2018. Yeah, we covered something in uh, Siberia as well. Putin was working on uh, saving the tigers there, and uh, there's been tiger attacks all over the gap, especially on dogs, but humans as well. So that's what happens. You can't repopulate an area with giant beasts when uh, you're actually uh, removing their habitat to put up uh, houses and stuff. Uh, now local farmers are using homemade ping pong bombs bought at roadside markets, very entrepreneurial, to defend their crop and themselves against the marauding animals hoping to scare the mammals away with the mini explosives. Unfortunately, the ping pong bombs seem to have the opposite effect, making the elephant's encounters even more dangerous for villagers. Oh yeah, could you imagine? Uh, yeah, your giant beast there, and you start throwing things at him, agitating him, uh, creating frustration and uh, furiosity and the animal reacts because it's scared, because loud noises scare things, especially uh, mammals. Uh, they grab you, they slap you to a tree. Sometimes they make sure you're dead by stepping on you or using their tusks. They can play with the bodies like it's a doll, Tan Wanagul, a researcher at the Eastern Elephants Education Center, told The Telegraph. Here's an image of the elephant. Looks like he's rampaging, terrorizing people. And here is an image of the ping pong balls, uh, just like a little firecracker by the look of it. Looks like they're using uh, foosball balls, not ping pongs. Interesting. Naturally, elephants will not attack, but people throw ping pong bombs and make loud noises, drive the elephants away. Now the elephants have become more aggressive. Hmm, who would have guessed? Uh, yeah, so uh, they go on to describe a woman... 73-year-old farmer called Pei Pakti was killed by an elephant in a savage attack during which a 10-foot-tall bull elephant nicknamed Yellow ripped his limbs off his body. Extraordinary. Uh, he was found by his wife, Bonsari Pakti, 69, who said her heart broke the day the gruesome picture was revealed. The mangled mess left of her beloved husband. And may he rest in peace. God bless his soul. Yeah, okay, so there it is. Uh, they're making these bombs on the side of the road to scare the elephants because they're scared because elephants are massive and they can do whatever they want. So heads up, if you're in Thailand, watch out for these elephants. Do not play with them. They are dangerous. AI is helping hunt for extraterrestrial life, and it's found eight strange new signals. Some 540 million years ago, diverse life forms suddenly began to emerge from the muddy ocean floors of the planet Earth. This period, known as the Cambrian Explosion, and these aquatic critters are our ancient ancestors. All complex life on Earth evolved from these underwater creatures, scientists believe all it took was an ever so slight increase in ocean oxygen levels and a certain threshold. We may now be in the midst of a Cambrian explosion for artificial intelligence. In the past two years, a burst of incredible capable AI programs like Midjourney, DALI 2, and ChatGPT have showcased the rapid progress we've made in machine learning. AI is now used in virtually all areas of science to help researchers with routine classification tasks. It's also helping our team of radio astronomers broaden the search for extraterrestrial life. And results so far have been promising. So discovering alien signals with AI, we fed our AI previously studied data set, discovered eight signals of interest, the classic algorithm missed. To be clear, these signals are probably not from extraterrestrial intelligence and are more likely rare cases of radio interference. There you have it, not so intelligent. AI algorithms do not understand or think. They do not excel at pattern recognition. Sorry, they do excel at pattern recognition and have proven exceedingly useful for tasks such as classification, but they do not have the ability to problem solve. They only do the specific tasks they were trained to do. That, yeah, they're machine learning. We're programming them. We're giving them data sets. Now, some have shown the capability to uh, go ahead and learn a brand new language so it could speak to somebody. That happened. Uh, so we're not exactly sure. Uh, there are reports that Bard, when uh, one of the engineers was working on that, 
he stated, and he came out publicly stating that he believes that this thing has uh, achieved a, a level of uh, self-awareness. General intelligence, perhaps. Uh, Techno-signature searches have been likened to looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Radio telescopes produce huge volumes of data. So they're basically looking for a pattern that may look like a language or some set of communication. And uh, they found eight signals with no redetections. So they're just trying to narrow the search. And there it is. We'll keep you posted on AI aliens as they come into existence. UK on the brink of being plunged into darkness with widespread blackouts. What could be happening here? Isn't the winter almost over? UK may have get may have to get used to blackouts in less than five years as a series of power stations close their doors, according to new research. Think Tank Public First has warned the country does not have sufficient means to generate enough power to make up for loss. Well, don't worry, everyone, because green energy to the rescue, uh, methane plants, you know, for processing your uh, waste, your hum human waste, they'll have hyd green, green hydrogen plants, of course, and uh, all of those wind mills that are so great at producing electricity. Under current plans, four British nuclear power plants will be decommissioned by April 2028. 20, Hurtlepool in County Durham, Hasham 1 and 2 in Lancashire, and Tornis in East Lothian. Uh, the last remaining coal-fired power station in the country, Ratcliffe on Soar in Nottinghamshire, is scheduled to shut down in September this year. So there you have it. A lot of people say nuclear power is the greenest of forms. They're working on nuclear uh, fission now, or nuclear fusion Public first reported tidal the mine gap explosion. Okay, yeah, sorry. It says delays to the delivery in the Hinkleport Sea, which began construction in 2016, could add up to the shortfall, while demand grows through the rise of electric vehicles and heat pumps. There you have it. So uh, there's a big push towards heat pumps. Canada's doing that, paying uh, upwards to $20,000 to have your, um, your uh, house fitted with these heat pumps and central air exchange systems. And they're going to be demanding on electricity. And where are we getting that electricity? You know, from renewable sources that are, uh, you know, not so uh, efficient. So, uh, yeah, nuclear is the most efficient, but everyone's terrified because of Chernobyl that happened uh, last century, you know, and uh, a little bit of the uh, Fukushima issue that happened there 15 years ago or so. Big tidal wave came in, washed out the nuclear power plant that was on the edge of the Pacific Rim. Way to go, Japan. Smart move. So there it is. It's pretty much just human error that causes most of the issues, I believe. A single mother speaks out on how the trad wife lifestyle led to her divorce. Well, what the heck is she talking about, trad wife? Well, uh, traditional wife, meaning that uh, before uh, the suffragette movement where women were allowed to vote in World War II when they started to work and got a taste for it, that lifestyle and the feminism movement was born, there was traditional wife who would stay home and rear the children and cook and clean and uh the man would go out and work that's the traditional nuclear setup and uh well it didn't work out for this lady sporting retro 50s hairstyles and since aprons trad wife influencers have taken over a pocket of the internet okay these traditional wives who showcase 30 second videos of homemade sourdough bread content and other glimpses into making uh of a perfect home are no ordinary stay-at-home moms. They steadfastly believe in traditional gender roles. That means staying devoted to housework and taking care of the children and being subservient to their working husbands. Not necessarily. I mean, like, if you're going to take it as the literal, like, I'm going to live in the 1950s, yeah. But uh, I believe the role, the modern trad wife or contemporary trad wife is basically just a woman who doesn't feel like she needs to work to have uh, validity in her life raising the children into uh, functioning humans in society that are open-minded is more like it and not feeling pressure to contribute financially to the family because she knows that her loving husband who protects her and does take out the trash and does some housework like you know the dishes like the trad wife because there's you know the trad husband they're not talking about that where the husband goes back to beating his wife and drinking every night and all that. There's no trad dad or trad husband. It's trad wife. Stay home, relax, you don't have to go out working, you don't have to be a bad bitch, all that stuff that's being pushed by the OnlyFans models. Anyway, uh, Anitza Templeton of Littleton, Colorado embodied the trad wife lifestyle for 10 years 
even before it was uh, popular. At 4 a.m., she would start making bread and begin prep for the day's meals, always from scratch. The mother of four would do all the household chores while her husband focused solely on bread winning. Now, after escaping a life that was miserable and unfulfilling, Templeton shares her story with her social media following and pod listeners to help other women who find themselves in similar situations and want a new life. Social media can make everything look real pretty because it's a 30 second clip. 30 seconds out of 10 years really omits a lot of ugliness in those relationships. Templeton, now 41, said she was raised as an evangelical Christian, believing that a husband had authority over his wife, but today she is divorced single mom by choice and advocates for women advocates for women who wish to break free from relationship dynamic that's all too easy and can create extreme power imbalance. Okay, yeah, well, you know, that's still a choice and she chose to leave instead of staying uh, with her husband and maybe communicating that I don't want to be suppressed or uh, subservient, you know what I mean? And, you know, the Bible took place 2,000 years ago when there was kind of like, you know, doors with wooden rickety things and... Uh, you know, women didn't really have the opportunity to do anything except raise children, and men were going around beating and raping whomever they felt like. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. The men were beating and raping men just for a laugh to show dominance. So, you know, it was a different time back then. So it was like men protecting women. It was more like the thing. So I'm open to a reinterpretation of women's roles. Absolutely. Like, you know, they're important. Uh individuals they're important to the cohesiveness of society and culture uh, very important to have open communication with women and men and whomever has ideas as long as they're going to remain calm and relaxed and follow uh logic so anyway uh, it didn't work out for this lady and uh, now she is living that life that she always wanted and we'll see how that works out for her we'll keep you posted on any updates and what's going on here let's get racist well, 24 expressions with racist origin you should stop saying. So if you say these, you're a racist. So let's start. Peanut gallery. All right. Well, we must have heard that one before. And, you know, the comment coming from the peanut gallery over there. So the expression, no more comments from the peanut gallery, is often used to signify that the speaker has had enough of hecklers or unwelcome commentary. But it's actually a Civil War era racist expression referring to the cheapest seats in an auditorium where the cheap peanuts were sold as snacks and black people were required to sit. There you go. So anytime you say that, you're saying, you know, look at the black guy making a stupid comment. <laughs> well, we'll have to erase that from the lexicon. Moving on. Uppity. These days, many people seem to think the word uppity just indicates someone who's snobby, but in fact it is a racist expression that was historically used by people in the southern U.S. to refer to a black person who didn't know their place in society, which was considered to be below that of any white person, which we know is absolutely incorrect. Because you peel off that pigmented skin and we're all the same. And I don't care. That's a fact. So all the skin color racism stuff is all old news. And if you're still holding on to that, then you are the problem. What you need to do is go, yeah, we know racism exists and it existed hardcore in the past. But we don't subscribe to that anymore. We don't even talk about it. We just call it out when we see it. That is inappropriate. You shouldn't say that. And we don't yell and argue. Hooligan. Now... Understood to mean troublemaker, especially applied to rowdy European football fans. The word hooligan is believed to come from an Irish surname, either Hulahan or O'Hooligan, and was used by British in the Victorian era as, era, sorry, as slang for a disreputable Irishman who causes trouble. Characters named hooligan were stereotypically portrayed in vaudeville shows as drunken, quarreling Irish ruffians. Very interesting. Gringo, the word is used by people in Latin America to refer to white people or foreigners, and not always in a nice way. While opinions differ on whether the word is truly offensive, it can certainly be taken as such and shouldn't be used in casual conversation. Hmm. Gyp or gypsy uh, is not an ethnic group, but rather a racist slur for people of Romania, Romani sorry, origin. It or originated when Europeans mistook the Romani people for Egyptians because of their darker coloring. They have been discriminated against for centuries and still are and are often unfairly labeled thieves, hence the racist expression getting gypped to refer to being cheated sold down the river people now say this to mean that they feel betrayed or cheated but it's actually a racist expression stemming from the fact that the 19th century american slave owners would often sell troublesome or misbehaving slaves to another plantation located further down the mississippi river where the living conditions were harsher 
Eeny, meeny, money mo, the children's rhyming song contained in the line has an ugly history you may not know. In the next line, catch a tiger by the toe. The word tiger used to be an extremely racist slur, I believe you all know, beginning with the N. Uh, the song may refer to the process of selecting a slave or what was done to punish one who ran away. Long time no see. Similar to no can do, it's mocking Chinese immigrants, English the phrase, long time no see, is an alternative to I haven't seen you in a long time, begins a racist expression making fun of the uh, pidgin English spoken by Native Americans. So classy, right? No can do. This short, snappy phrase often used as a lighthearted negative response to a request originated as a racist way for people to mock broken English spoken by Chinese immigrants to, American, to uh, immigrants to America in the early 20th century. So maybe take the extra second and say, I'm sorry, I can't do that instead. Eskimo, the actual meaning of Eskimo is one that nets sh snowshoes, an accurate way to describe people living in the Arctic region, but many of them consider Eskimo a derogatory term that racist colonizers translated as eaters of meat. Hmm, interesting. Basically, barbarians, or excommunicati, the excommunicated, or people who have been removed from the Catholic Church. So there you have it. Mumbo-jumbo, the expression derives from the name uh, Mama Jumbo, a character often portrayed by a male dancer in West African Madinka culture ceremonies. British explorers in the 1730s got his name wrong and found him terrifying and grotesque, and the ritual is meaningless, hence the derogatory term of the name to indicate that something is unintelligible or nonsense. Off the reservation used to imply someone is out of line or not adhering to the rule of group which they belong, like a political party, this expression comes from the fact that Native Americans were confined to reservations, parcels of land allocated to them, and their movements restricted by the U.S. government against their will. Chinese whispers, this phrase, more common in the U.K., refers to inaccurate gossip or rumors and often applied to the children's game we all know as telephone. It probably got its name from the idea that Chinese was difficult language to understand and translate. Uh, it's not particularly malicious, but it's not necessarily nice either. Uh, the term grandfather clause means the old law continues to apply in certain situations instead of the new law. Unfortunately, the original grandfather clause was used in the American South to deny black people the right to vote, stating that only people who could vote before 1866 and their descendants were exempt from educational property and tax requirements for voting. Ghetto, in ancient Venice, the ghetto was the area where Jewish people lived, so using the word to describe a neighborhood or area as poor, low class, or dangerous implies that the speaker thinks the minorities or racialized groups living there are all those things as well. Thug, although this word originated in India, and meant ruffian or troublemaker, it's now used primarily as a negative context by white people to label younger black people, particularly men, as violent, irrational, untrustworthy, or gang members. The label is often applied based on how the person dresses, looks, or speaks rather than by their action. And I don't necessarily think it's uh, white people just using that. I think black people totally uh, adopted that term as, uh, you know, Tupac had thug life tattooed across his belly, totally embracing the lifestyle of uh, what is described here, which is interesting. Uh, what else do we have? Fuzzy Wuzzy sounds cute and cuddly like the teddy bear in the nursery rhyme, right? Not so fast, British colonial soldiers in the 1800s used this racist expression to refer mockingly to East African nomads who had curly hair and dark skin, and its use later expanded to describe people from other areas such as Papua New Guinea and Sudan. Inner city, it may sound like a simple geographic reference, he's from the inner city, but in America this phrase is often used as a coded language to describe African Americans, uh, with the implication of laziness, poverty, criminality, and dependence on welfare. In other words, it's racist, judgmental, and unkind. Uh, tipping point, though it began as a phrase that meant what it said, the point at which something began to tip in the 1950s America took on a new racist meaning, the point at which a certain percentage of black families moved into a neighborhood, thereby initiating the departure of white families to other areas. Jew him down, never heard of it. Uh, Anti-Semitism, unfortunately, certainly has disappeared since the horrific events, certainly hasn't, since the horrific events of the Second World War, the phrase Jew him or her down is still used to refer bargaining with someone for a lower price. It comes from very old offensive stereotypes of Jewish people as shrewd money lenders who always haggle over the cost of something. Oriental, the word itself means Eastern, but the problem with referring to people from East Asia or as Oriental uh, is that it implies that they are different uh, not Western, not white, and somehow lesser than. East Asians have never referred to themselves as Oriental, nor should anyone 
when it's just as simple to say Asian or their specific nationality. Well, how about uh, calling uh, Germany Deutschland and stuff like that? Like, you know, are we going to go ahead and change everything? Cotton picking, just a cotton picking minute. Even Bugs Bunny used this expression, but its history is bleak because the cotton was picked almost exclusively by black slaves in the southern United States. Many people believe it's a derogatory term. It may not be uh, enough people consider it offensive. It's best use. There you have it. Last one, chop chop. The phrase meaning hurry up comes from the Cantonese word cop or make haste. It's generally used uh, condescendingly to someone the speaker considers to be below them in status, which only worsens the fact that it's making fun of a pidgin English spoken by Chinese migrants. And there you have it. And West End Play tells white theatergoers they aren't welcome as it hosts all black audience night as Kit Harrington production to protect ticket holders from the white gaze. Uh, yeah, so we're not even going to get into that. But like, obviously a racist, uh, if you, you know, flip the script on that, instead of saying uh, blacks only, Chinese only, you know, a little bit sketchy depending on where you are. But if you said whites only, oh yeah, you are getting the police show up for sure so black blackout nights only 17th of july and 17th of september i mean big deal whatever uh caucasian chicago cops sues the city to change race after years of discrimination so okay here we go chicago police officers suing the city to change his race after the department allowed officers to switch up their gender to match their identity okay let's go ahead since the department allows an officer's gender identity to be corrected to match their lived experience Youssef should also be permitted to change his race according to his suit Youssef alleges that he's been repeatedly overlooked for promotions because he is caucasian adding that other minority applicants have advanced while very few caucasians get prompted the 20 year old veteran of the chicago police department notes in his lawsuit that the cpd's promotion system benefits minority candidates even if they score poorly on exams are less qualified or have disciplinary issues absolutely this is happening i've seen a, something there as a uh, job application and it was like if you are indigenous or a uh, minority identifying like you know what happens if a white person identifies as minority like well what if you check the stats and you could prove that there's more uh of a different race than white people in your town like you know it's all insane he joined force into the florida time and department only offered three race selections caucasian black and hispanic yusef chose caucasian well guess what maybe he's not uh, okay, so uh, blank prohibition against changing officer's race. Youssef said he was told that he would have produced DNA tests before his race could be changed. Okay, on his record. But after providing results from a genetic test that showed his heritage and race, the department ultimately said it was not possible to revise his official record. So they all bait and switch. The idea of even having to prove race is wrong. Race is not scientific. And uh, there's obviously a pending litigation on that. So, uh, yeah, this was obviously coming and so are maps because we're allowing everything the whole idea of letting everyone be free and do whatever they want will implode just like it did in sodom and gomorrah uh, if you don't believe it it is a real city uh, whether it was destroyed by god of course is debated by many but it is a real city and you can research it sigma tiger signing out <laughs>